Who else is excited to visit San Francisco? Seriously, videos are coming out of the city where it shows insane retail theft. Anybody here wanna clear up what's happening in San Fran? Because I'm seeing a huge wave of retailers and just all these different stores leaving the city as if the apocalypse is here. It's crazy, but you know what? There's a bunch of cities that are struggling right now and it's got a lot to do with retail stores closing up shop and theft going up. Do you guys think that they're directly connected or is there something else going on? Now, some analysts are optimistic and have even figured out that the bear market is now behind us. That's good news, right? Well, not as much if you listen to one of the strategists for Bank of America, a guy who who predicted how recession fears would fuel a stock exodus. And guess what? He was right. So what is he saying today? He's saying, sell your US stocks. Are any of you willing to do that? And do you think that as parents, we should charge our kids rent once they're done with school? Is this actually a good way to teach them how to live in the real world? All right, guys, let's get right into the updates. Also, by the way, if you own a home, make sure to get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below. The average unexpected home repair is around 800 to to $1,000. Never be caught off guard by another very expensive unexpected home repair again get your free home warranty quote link in the description down below do you guys remember when san francisco was a great place to visit i mean i do i mean me and my family we went there a couple years ago probably three four years ago it was an amazing experience but today everybody's leaving the city and who could blame them crime has also risen and even retailers are packing their bags for better areas were you aware that the overall commercial retail vacancy in union square has gone up 15.5 percent just in the first three months of 2023 which is up 14.2% in the last quarter of 2022. The heart of San Francisco's shopping district just lost another store to concerns about crime. Luxury Australian furniture store Coco Republic just opened. It poured millions into remodeling the building, but now it says the showroom has to close in July. A statement says safety concerns for shoppers and employees, a decline in sales since the pandemic. So. If it feels like you've been hearing a lot of this lately, you have. Coco Republic joins other stores in the Union Square and Market area to call it quits on the city. Most recently, Nordstrom and Westfield. Our Wilson Walker looks at how these vacancies are making it really tough for small businesses trying to survive. So we took a look at some crime stats for the Central District of San Francisco Police. That includes Union Square. Burglaries were up about 8% compared to last year. Larceny theft up 11 percent. Violent crime has been more steady in recent years. There was a small gain in robberies and assaults over the last year. So let's count some of them off, right? So you got Walgreens, you got Target, you got Old Navy, Whole Foods, you got T-Mobile, Saks, Fifth Avenue, Nordstrom. I'm running out of fingers, guys. And they're all either temporarily closing or moving out of the city for good. Jamie Nordstrom, Nordstrom CEO, he said this, quote, the dynamics of the downtown San Francisco market have changed dramatically over the past several years, impacting customer foot traffic to our stores and our ability to operate successfully, end quote. While Saks Off Fifth said that the reason for abandoning their store in the Market Street location, it's due to store performance and other factors. But what do you guys think that those other factors are and maybe what those other dynamics might be. Now, you would think that this is because of the crime and the theft that continues to go up in the city. But if that was the case, why is rent still so high there? Now, you also have to think that a lot of jobs have also been lost, similar to what's happening over in New York City. I mean, look at this, guys. A survey shows that 40,000 retail jobs have been lost in New York since the health crisis. And people are also moving out from the city. From April 2020 to July 2022, their population went down by 460 68,000 or around 5.3%. Now, again, we got to address the elephant in the room. What is happening in these cities that are making people run for the hills? And what's the common denominator here? However, it is weird that we're seeing people say that the bull market is here because things should be much, much better if that was the case, right? I mean, look, if we compare the price of the S&P 500 back in October 12, 2022, which by the way, was one of its lowest points in recent time, we have now come back up by like 20%. That's good news though, right? Does this mean that the bear market is now over? Now, of course, if you ask Michael Hartnett, a strategist for Bank of America, as he's warning that you should sell your stocks right now, as this could be as good as it gets. In fact, he's telling you guys to sell your shares of the S&P 500 4200. That's where it is right now. Or wait, I think it even went beyond that. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why? Well, according to Hartnett, tech and AI are now forming a bubble, and it's quite possible that the Fed will continue to raise interest rates going into the future. You see, the markets, they want to pivot. I mean, heck, they want that surge in the stock market, right? It's easy money. But as per this prediction, quote, if the Fed mistakenly pauses rate hikes this year, 
U.S. bond yields will reflect that by rising above 4%. And if so, we most certainly ain't seen the last Fed rate hike of the cycle, end quote. Now, of course, you guys can do what you want with your shares. And at the same time, you can do what you want with this information. It's worth about as much as you've paid for it. By the way, of course, I'm not a financial advisor and I would never tell you what to do with your money. Now, speaking of information, Netflix actually got 100,000 daily signups between May 26th and the 27th after they cracked down on the sharing of passwords. Netflix shares seeing a boost today after new data shows that its crackdown on password sharing seems to be paying off. Yahoo Finance's Alexandra Canal is here with the details on that. Ali, how big of a win is it here for Netflix? I think it's a really big win, and there's continued positive data that we've been getting on the ad-supported tier. Now we have new data about the crackdown on password sharing. Antenna is an analytics platform, and they said that U.S. signups for Netflix jumped by the most in at least four and a half years following the rollout of that password sharing crackdown in the U.S. and over 100 other countries and territories on May 23rd. Good for them, huh? So here's a question. How long do they think that this is going to last? Will more people just sign up for memberships or are some people just going to abandon the streaming service completely? Let me tell you though, we live in a world where streaming will also slow down, not because people don't like it, but because everyone will want in on the dollars. I mean, how many streaming services are out there right now? And do you think that consumers have all the money in the world to just subscribe to all of them? It really makes you wonder just how many of us know what we're doing with our money. What are you guys doing to try and teach your kids the value of their hard earned dollar? Now, this next story sparked a huge debate since these parents, they wanted to teach their daughter a lesson in life. If you want to go to college, you can't keep living here without paying. So Erica and Cody Archie, they put their foot down with this one and they told their daughter Kylie that rent would start at $200 a month and it could go as high as $300 per month if she wanted to eat as well. Now, before we even get any further into this story, would you guys do something like this to your kids? I'm not here to judge. I'm just wondering. So anyway, Kylie, she lived with her parents for about nine months until she decided to move out, becoming completely independent. Now, I want you guys to realize that we all have our own methods of, you know, raising our kids, but I personally don't find anything wrong with this. I mean, look at what it's done for this girl. Now, if you don't understand how the real world works, then you're not going to be able to last very long out there. Money makes the world go round. And if you're not equipped with the knowledge and the experience, then life is probably going to knock you down. But hey, that's just my viewpoint. How about you guys? What are your thoughts on teaching your kids about about their finances at an early age. Make sure you let me know in the comments down below. I'm looking forward to reading those. You gotta realize at some point that things have really changed in our country. Something is terribly off and we can see it every time we visit our local Walmart or whatever store we frequent. Prices are still high and our wages have not kept up. Now, it would be great if we could have multiple streams of income, right? Oh wait, that's absolutely possible with small businesses, home-based businesses, side hustles, so long as you understand your niche. And with that cash flow, investing will also be beneficial for you. Within a few months to a year, you know, we're going to see great opportunities within the real estate market and within the stock market. But getting started with these things, it can be a little tricky and you don't want to waste your time either. And so that's where I come in. So if you guys want to learn more about this, feel free to drop me some comments down below. That way I'll know whether or not you want me to make more videos on those topics. Now, the road to financial freedom, it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. Now, at this point, you should see two videos above my head. Go ahead and click on those videos right now and check those out. And before I go, please drop a huge like for the channel. I really appreciate that. Share this video with everyone you know. Subscribe for your daily dose of the truth. Appreciate you guys hanging out again, and I'm gonna catch you on the next one.